So, uh, today I am going to take the next unit process for pyrometallurgical extraction of metals from ores. So, the next process is smelting. Now, in fact, uh, let us see what is smelting. What is smelting? Now, mind you, there is a difference between melting and smelting. In the smelting, the definition what I am going to give now. Melting means you are melting, for example, uh, pure metal or alloy or whatever. So, that is a melting, but smelting is a difference. So, there is a difference between smelting and melting. The smelting is what is smelting? It is a unit process, it is a unit process. to heat a mixture of a mixture of ore concentrate ore concentrate plus flux plus fuel if necessary if necessary above the melting point above the melting point now this above the melting point is different than what was in the roasting in the roasting we were carrying out the process below the melting point so that the initial state of the uh, raw material was solid and final state is also solid. But in case of smelting, the initial state of the raw material is solid, but the final state is the liquid and gases. So, that is a very important difference between the two. So, above the melting point to separate, to separate the gang mineral the gang mineral from ore in the liquid state, in the liquid state. This is a general definition of smelting. The whole objective is to separate the gang mineral, but remember the state of the gang mineral in case of smelting is the liquid. It is a difference between roasting and smelting. Again, I will like to point out in the roasting, both the states initial and final were solid, but in case of smelting, initial state is uh, solid and the final state is that of liquid. Now, when metal is separated as sulphide, when metal is separated a sulphide from the smelting of ore then we called mate smelting so in fact in mate smelting we have ore concentrate plus flux plus air plus fuel if necessary then we have mat slag and gases and the typical example of of application of this mat smelting technology in case of copper extraction rather in case of extraction of copper from sulfite sometimes nickel from sulfite and uh, sometimes antimony and sometimes antimony. Now, another say when metal is separated, when metal is separated as liquid, then it is called reduction smelting then it is called reduction smelting. 
So, that means, we have mat smelting and we have reduction smelting. In mat smelting, we separate gang mineral and produce a mat. In reduction smelting, we also separate gang mineral, but mind you, here we produce liquid metal. Now, some examples of reduction smelting. Some examples of reduction smelting, the famous example all of you know is the production of pig iron from iron ore concentrate is one such example. Another example is zinc from zinc concentrate. Now, here slightly there is a way because here zinc is produced in the form of vapor and then they are condensed and ultimately you get the liquid. Another example of reduction smelting is lead from lead ore concentrate. So, each one we will take in detail we will go, we will solve the material and heat balance and so on. So, first I will be concentrating on mat smelting, mat smelting. Now, obviously, there are certain advantages of extraction of metal through mat smelting route, because what we are doing in mat smelting, we are separating gang mineral and producing a mat from the copper ore concentrate. Now, what are the advantages of it? The advantages is, advantages of mat smelting, first of all, low melting point of mat, low melting point of mat. Now, for example, Cu 2 S plus F E S, it has around 1000 degree Celsius is its melting point. So, that means, you do not require a very high amount of energy to produce the mat. This is the one such advantage. That means, you will be requiring less amount of thermal energy by converting the metal of the ore in the form of sulphide and then to extract the metal. However, it will vary from uh, reserve to reserve or metal to metal, particularly for sulphide ore where direct reduction of sulphide to metal is, is rather relatively difficult. In some cases, the met, uh, smelting route is technologically feasible and also energy efficient. You are seeing, for example, in copper extraction, the met which consists of Cu 2 S and Fe S, it has a melting point of around 1000 degrees Celsius. Also, another advantage is that the Cu 2 S which is contained in the mat, it does not require any reducing agent. That means, Cu 2 S of the mat, Cu 2 S of the mat, it does not require any reducing agent in the sense of say carbon or those reducing agent, they are not required. It is say by blowing oxygen, you convert to oxide and then it is a sulphide oxide reaction that lead to the production of copper. So, that is the another advantage of having the mat smelting. This is for example, for copper. Similarly, if you take the nickel mats, this is for the copper mats. Similarly, nickel mats, say nickel mats, they are typically contained FES, FES plus Ni 3 S 2 plus C U 2 S. This is typically the nickel mat. Now, here the melting point of Ni 3 S 2, melting point of Ni 3 S 2 is around uh, 800 degree Celsius, whereas Ni 3 S 2 Ni 3 S 2 plus Cu 2 S 
it forms eutectic if you see the phase diagram forms eutectic uh, at 720 degree Celsius and uh, 85 percent Ni 3 S 2. So, what is said I mean what I wanted to tell you is that that the met smelting technology is sometimes suitable for extraction of metal from sulphide ore particularly when sulphide ore is associated with iron also. And for your information most of the sulphide ore they are associated with iron. So, in that case this met smelting technology well for sulphide ore uh, is good and because of the advantages. Now, what is again met smelting? So, if I want to represent in the form of the reaction I will put it say copper ore concentrate, copper ore concentrate plus flux plus air plus fuel if necessary then oh, of course plus heat externally if it is sufficient otherwise you have to supply it by combustion of the fuel that will give you mat plus slag plus gases. Now, this is what I am referring now to mat smelting of copper ore. I am referring now to mat smelting of copper ore that is what the subject matter of the following lecture. Now, well here what is a mat already I have said what is a mat in connection with the copper melting say so, mat is a molten mixture is a molten mixture essentially of Cu 2 S plus Fe S. It sometimes uh, it may contain oxygen, it may contain oxygen and uh, say in the form of Fe 3 O 4. I am talking the industrial mat. It is very difficult to control the dissolution of oxygen in the mat during the smelting stage. So, sometimes you will may get industrial mat may consist of Cu 2 S plus F E S plus F E 3 O 4, but in the problems which you will solve unless otherwise it is given you will be considering mat is a molten mixture of Cu 2 S plus F E S. If it had something then it will be given in the problem, but for your information the industrial mats will con may contain Cu 2 S F E S is there, but in addition to because of the dissolved oxygen it may form to F E 3 O 4 also. Now, say important thing in case of mat is to define the grade of the mat, grade, mat grade or you can also call copper grade of mat, you can call grade of mat or sometimes you can also call copper grade of mat copper grade of mat. Well, it is uh, useless to call iron grade of the mat because you are not concerned with the iron. Uh, so, that is why you call a copper grade that means uh, how much amount of copper is over there. So, this is defined a copper grade or you say mat grade you say the uh, you are producing a mat of 40 percent a 40 percent mat that means it is having its copper grade is 40 percent. So, mat is always given in terms of copper because it is used to produce copper not iron. So, remember. So, the problem may have 40 percent mat or the grade of mat is 40 percent or copper grade of the mat is 40 percent all have the same meaning. So, for example, if you write copper grade it can be defined as amount of copper in mat amount of copper in mat 
upon amount of C u 2 s plus amount of F e s. Now, this is copper grade when mat is a mixture of mixture of C u 2 s and plus F e s only. If it has Fe 3 O 4 also, then amount of copper in the mat upon amount of C u 2 s plus amount of Fe s plus amount of Fe 3 O 4 into 100. That is how you will define the density of mat. It is given in percent. Now, another important feature, the density of mat, density of mat that is equal to uh, 5 to 5.5 gram per centimeter cube and uh, the melting point it depends on say proportions of Cu 2 S plus F E S, but normally of the industrial grade mat the melting point is between 1150 to 1200 degree Celsius. So, you can imagine this mat smelting is usually carried out anywhere between 1200 to 1250 or 1300 degree Celsius, not higher than this temperature. This is the uh, what is a mat. Now, another product is slag. What is a slag now? What is a slag? Slag, remember, is a molten mixture, is a molten mixture. I am talking in connection with the copper smelting, is a molten mixture of mainly oxides. It may contain sulphide, it depends, but mainly it is a mixture of oxides. Uh, say in smelting of copper ore concentrates, for example, is in smelting of copper ore concentrate. The slag may contain SiO2, Al2O3, calcium oxide, FeO, Fe2O3, Fe3O4, and it may contain sometimes unreacted uh, sulphide. Well, that depends on the process of smelting, but in ideal condition it will contain SiO2, all oxides are there, but some unreacted sulphide is there, well it will also be there. Now, some of the properties which is required, some of the properties which are required for a slag, because slag is normally is highly viscous. So, at the end of the process you have to drain out the slag as well as metal. So, some of the desirable properties are one, low viscosity. low viscosity. Second, the solubility is important. That means, slag should be able to dissolve the oxides which are being separated during smelting of ore concentrate. That is an important thing. That is, you have to make a slag of composition such, so that the oxides present in the ore concentrate, they are dissolved. You have to form the liquid. It is a homogeneous liquid solution rather molten solution. Third important property, it should have a low melting point, should have a low melting point because you will not go more than 1200 or 1300 degrees Celsius. So, at that particular temperature, the oxides which are being separated from the ore concentrate, they should be able to dissolve and they should be liquid. Now, here uh, you should also think that slag normally here does not act as a refining agent in contrast to the uh, iron making. So, that part we separate at the moment here. So, in case of this melt smelting copper uh, slag, these are the say important properties that the slag should 
possess. Now, next let us consider some of the chemical reactions which can occur. The chemical reactions, for example, 6 CuO plus 4 FeS, 3 Cu2S plus 4 FeS plus SO2 or 2 CuSO4 plus 2, 2 FeS. Now, the CuSO4 may form during roasting. Uh, it, you might have roasted at a little higher PO2 pressure. So, CuSO4 might form. So, this also has to reduce to Cu2S because you have to reduce otherwise you will be losing copper here. You have Cu2S plus 2 FeO plus 3 CuSO4 plus 2 FeS now here this should be FeO. Then you have Cu2O plus FeS that is equal to Cu2S plus FeO. Now, that is what some of the reactions. Uh, now, sometimes say oxygen has greater affinity, say oxygen has greater affinity from, uh, for iron. has greater affinity for iron than copper. So, the unreduced FeS, it may react with Fe2O3 or Fe3O4. So, accordingly 10 Fe2O3, it may reduce with FeS that may form 7 Fe3O4 plus SO2 or 3 Fe3O4 may react with FeS and it forms 10 FeO plus SO2. So, FeO and Fe3O4, FeO and Fe3O4, they are dissolved in the slag. Mind you, Fe3O4 is difficult to dissolve as compared to FeO. Density of slag, density of slag that is equal to 2.8 to 3 gram per centimeter cube. So, you are seeing there is a difference in density of mat and slag and by virtue of this difference in density, we are able to separate, we are able to separate say mat and slag. So, you have this is a sort of interface. So, somewhere here you have the mat and somewhere here you have this lag. So, you can see now the mat smelting is able to separate the sulf the metal in the form of sulphide from rest of the ore. So, this mat it only contains in ideal condition Cu2S plus FeS and nothing else plus little amount of Fe3O4 if oxygen has been dissolved, but normally it has Cu2S plus FeS. So, all impurities are eliminated and here you have the slag may contain all SiO2, Al2O3 and plus all other impurities which you have uh, in the ore concentrate. So, that is what this uh, mat smelting process is. So, now it should also be remembered that higher oxides of iron are difficult to slag. I mean in general higher oxides of iron higher oxides of iron are difficult to slag, are difficult to slag. slag. To slag means it is difficult to remove. This precaution must be uh, taken during roasting. During roasting you have to see that the uh, iron I mean uh, should not be converted to Fe2O3 or Fe3O4, it will have a lot of problems in the smelting and uh, further stages. So, therefore, a controlled amount of roasting is needed. Well, that is what the thing you should know. Now, say conventionally the technology of smelting. Now, before I say about the technology of smelting, the third component that was coming was the gases, right. The gases were also forming. So, gases essentially consist of SO2. 
normally sometimes SO3 may be there, but it depends on the uh, oxygen content so, SO2, nitrogen. If excess amount of air is used, then you have oxygen also uh, and uh, sometimes SO3 could be there, well depends upon the, uh, the technology or depend on the process, depend upon the reaction and so on and so forth. These are the mainly the gases which you will find in the uh, smelting. Now, if fuel, if fuel is used, then you may get CO oblique CO2 depend upon the state of combustion. So, these are the gases. Now, conventionally the roasting is carried out, eh, sorry, conventionally smelting is carried out in reverberatory furnaces, in reverberatory furnaces. Fire with coal or oil. They are very long furnaces and traditionally the smelting of copper ore is carried out in reverberatory furnaces. Still the rever reverberatory furnaces are used, but now uh, these reverberatory furnaces are replaced in recent years by so called flash smelting. flash smelting. Now, the advantages of flash smelting is that it combines, it combines roasting and smelting both. Whereas, in the reverberatory furnace, the ore has to be roasted first and then it is transferred to reverberatory furnace for smelting purposes. Then a new technology came that is the flash smelting. Now here roasting and smelting both are combined. Now the reason for this you must have seen in case of roasting a large amount of sulphur dioxide is created. Now the, this byproduct sulphur dioxide it can be very easily used to form sulfuric acid and there is very substantial amount of SO2 is being produced. So now imagine you have at one stage roasting, take the roast product and then smelt it. So, you have SO2 in the roasting stage, then you have SO2 in the smelting stage. So, both you have to uh, collect and then send it for the H2SO4 plant. This is little bit uneconomical as compared to a process which can do both these functions simultaneously. That means, you start with the ore concentrate and get a product which is liquid mat liquid slag and gases. What will be the advantage of this? Here you will get a concentrated amount of SO2 only from one reactor in contrast to a technology which has roasting first followed by smelting as it was done in reverberatory furnaces. So, the advantage of flesh smelting is that you have ore concentrate. You have ore concentrate, mind you it is not roast ore, it is ore concentrate which is coming from the mineral beneficiation plant. Now, this ore concentrate plus fuel plus heat plus flux, you get here liquid mat plus slag, of course, liquid slag and plus gases. So, here the main interest in sulphide ore is in the SO2, sulphur dioxide. Uh, sulphur dioxide and some proportion of sulphur trioxide is also formed, but the main reason for the development of this technology called flash smelting, which combine both of them together, is to see that how a SO2 can be produced in a concentrated way so that, so that a large amount of uh, byproduct can be converted into a saleable product like for example, H2SO4. So, in most of the copper extraction plant, the reverberatory furnace has been replaced by the modern technology which is called flash smelting. So, now in flash smelting what is being done? Just a brief, in flash smelting, what is being done is that 
a mixture of dry concentrate a mixture of dry concentrate dry concentrate plus flux together with oxygen together with oxygen or hot air is injected into a reactor is injected in a reactor now remember if you are exposed and i think you are exposed to the course of kinetics now you are injecting a very fine particles of uh, ore concentrates so the reaction will be extremely rapid and very high temperatures are created in the flesh is melting so accordingly control of temperatures is 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 required now this is a well developed technology so what i wanted to say that uh, uh, that uh, because of the reaction rate is very fast in case of flesh is melting so here heat generated is sufficient heat generated is sufficient to carry out the smelting now, it, now this uh, flesh smelting could be so called autogenous in nature also where you may not be requiring any heat from the outside so this is what about the brief idea of what is smelting and i hope with this brief introduction on smelting or on the met smelting we are able to solve the problems concerning material and heat balance in met smelting so i will suggest that for further details for further details you may consult the reference for example hs ray R. Sridhar and K. P. Ibrahim extraction of non-ferrous metals. Extraction of non-ferrous metals. You can also see a book which is say Rosenquist. principles of extractive metallurgy principles of extractive metallurgy plus you can also see by butts metallurgical problems metallurgical problems so this is about the so called brief introduction and to prepare you for carrying out the material and heat balance in the met smelting now what i have planned let me go for a very simple problem and then we'll go for the further problem so as such first i will say let us take it say in a copper ore say in a copper ore say chalcopyrite is 34 percent pyrite 30 percent and SiO2 36 percent now it is very simple determine determine percent copper percent iron and percent sulfur now here you have to take say atomic weights of copper 64 iron 56 sulfur 32 so it's a straight forward you can find out percent copper that will be equal to 34 upon 184 into 64 
Well, by the way, chalcopyrite is, I uh, will tell you what chalcopyrite is, that is equal to 11.83 percent. By the way, chalcopyrite, it represents a mineral which is Cu FeS2, I think you know because in several lectures I have said. Now, similarly, say percent iron, pyrite is FeS2. I write now, now uh, pyrite is uh, FeS2, that means pyrite, let us put FeS2. So, percent iron is coming from two sources, 34 upon 184 into 56 plus 30 upon 120 into 56. I hope you can add both of them and that will be 24.35 percent. This is the percent iron. Now, similarly, percentage of sulfur that will be equal to 34 upon 184 into 64 plus 30 upon 120 into 64, that will be equal to 27.83 percent. That is why the answers for this. Now, this is just starting with the very easy, so that you can also solve the problem. So, let us see the next problem. So, next problem is, put second, say calculate, calculate percent gang, percent gang in chalcosyrite in chalcosite ore, in chalcosite ore, when copper is 11.83 percent. Do you know what is chalcosite ore? Chalcosite ore is a sulphide ore which contains Cu2S. So, Chalcosite ore chalcosite that is equal to Cu2S plus gang. So, 11.83 percent copper is given. So, the gang would be the gang would be hundred minus 160 upon 128. So, next is say what percent of iron, what percent of iron in a concentrate, in a concentrate of composition given say CuFeS2 34 percent, FeS2 30 percent and SiO2 36 percent is to be removed is to be removed to make 40 percent met. Now, as I said in the lecture, when I say to make 40 percent met, that means what? That means the copper grade of the met is 40 percent and rest, rest nothing is uh, defined except when we say 40 percent met, that means the only means of this it has the copper grade of the mat is 40 percent, that is what I have to say. So, now let us put it in the solution, say we put the definition that will be 40 upon 100, that is the mat grade, that is equal to 11.83 percent is copper upon to have 14.78 percent plus 
percent F E S. So, now if I solve this thing, then I will be getting 0 0.4 into 14.78 into plus percent F E S that will be equal to 11.83. So, from here I get percent F E S that will be 14.795. So, percent iron that will be 9.415. Now, this percent iron or this percent F E S should remain in the mat. Now, what has to be removed? So, percent is iron to be removed, percent iron to be removed that will be equal to total is 24.35 minus 9.415 that will be 14.935 percent. That means, I have to remove 14.935 percent of iron in a mixture which has been given CuFeS to this, FeS to this, SiO to this, if I want to get a MET of 40 percent grade. Now, another problem let us take it. You recall the problem 1. Now, the problem 1, the data refers to problem 1. So, if the ore, if the ore concentrate of 1, If the ore concentrate of problem 1, let us put it, of problem 1 is fused down, is fused down and only excess sulfur is removed, excess sulfur is eliminated the question is what would be what would be the composition of the resulting mat the resulting now, could you understand what this means? That is, you have to remove the excess sulfur from the ore concentrate of composition given in 1. So, what was given over there? It was given uh, that CuFeS2 34 percent, FeS2 30 percent and SiO 2 36 percent. So, the F E S 2 it decomposes, decomposes to F E S plus S. So, that is the excess sulfur that you have to remove it in order to get to calculate the MET. So, percent C U 2 S that will be 14.78 percent and percent F E S if you calculate that will come out to be 38.25 percent then MET grade MET grade that will be equal to as defined percent is copper upon percent C U 2 S plus percent F E S into 100 if you substitute that will come 22.2 percent. So, that is how you will be calculating uh, the so called this particular problem. Now, another interesting problem is said let us consider now a copper mat, a copper mat may be represented by may be represented by m c u 2 s dot n f e s with no fixed values of m and n 
with no fixed values of m and n. If the MET grade is 38 percent, if the MET grade is 38 percent, what would be what would be the entire composition of mat right so this is a very simple so you have to again write down say 0 0.38 that will be equal to amount of copper amount of copper upon amount of Cu 2 S plus amount of F E S. So, all that now we have to put it. So, that will be equal to 128 m upon 160 m plus 88 n. Now, here again C u s molecular weight omega at all everything I have given. So, all that you have to solve. So, if you solve this equation, you will be getting for example, 60.8 m plus 33.44 n that will be equal to 128 m. Now, here all that you can calculate the ratio of m is to n that is equal to 33.44 upon 67.2 that is equal to 0 0.5. So, that means, you have the composition C u 2 s into 2 F e s. So, that is what the composition of mat is. However, uh, in the ratio of m into n say for example, 2 C u 2 s 4 F e s or 4 C u 2 s 8 f whatever the composition in all the composition range where the ratio of m by n is 0.5, the grade of MET will be 0 